shring ka e i la ring asa ka la ring sa ka la ring sa hoin kling ring shring Namaste. So we're continuing our series on the Soda Shakshai Mantra. And today we're going to look at Hring Bija. In the mantra, after Shring comes Hring, which is also called Maya Bija. Maya means the illusion, the manifestation, form in general. So anything which has form is actually maya. Huh? Ma means not. Ya means what is. So maya, it really is, doesn't exist. <laughs> it's just an appearance in Brahman. Brahman is unconditioned consciousness. But there is uh, an artifact which arises in Brahman, which appears to exist. Uh, it appears to have form, even though Br Brahman is actually formless. <laughs> That's why it's Maya, <laughs> right? So, this Bijam, Hring, is a combination of Ha, Ra, I, Nada, M, mm, and Ing, the Bindu. So, Ha refers to the divine light of Shiva. And uh, one of the names, a very common name of Shiva is Hara. Ha and Ra. Huh? These are the two first letters of this uh, Bija. So Ra, uh, Ha rather, comprises both Prana and Akasha. Prana is the life energy, Kundalini. Uh, and the akasha is space, space-time. So actually these things are the requirements necessary for anything to exist. So these are coming from Shiva, or these are Shiva. And these are the preconditions for existence. They are not existence itself. Just like in the Buddha's jhana, when we get near the top, we meditate on space. Infinite space. And if you think of space, which is actually infinite, actually unlimited, then even the whole creation is so small, by comparison, it, it's insignificant, it just disappears. So really unlimited space, really infinite space, is also nothingness, emptiness. And this is Brahman. Brahman is a space where everything shows up. But that which shows up is insignificant in comparison to the space. So from the point of view of Brahman, it doesn't really exist. That's why it's Maya. <laughs> okay. The next component is Ra, which is also known as Agni Bija. Agni means fire. So, let there be light. Huh? Ha, space, and Ra, light. This is how the creation comes to be. Uh, now, what happens then, the, the properties of Ra are added to the properties of Ha. And we have Hara, which is the name of Shiva. So, the fire that is needed for our sustenance is one kind of fire, the life energy. And then Dharma is another kind of fire, the purifying fire. When you have some metals, and you want to purify, let's say you have a mixture of gold and some other metals, you put it in the fire. And the fire makes the metals separate according to their melting temperature. And that's how gold or anything is purified. And also we find that if you have something contaminated and you treat it with fire, 
that will purify it and it becomes pure. So this Dharma is the fire of Agni. And Agni, the demigod Agni, is also known for Dharma. He's a very famous keeper of the Dharma. And of course, when we do a Homa ceremony, which you've seen here uh, before, then we invoke the fire, we invoke Agni, but then we ask the Lord to become present, huh? either in his masculine or feminine form. So, even it's said, Agni is so powerful, fire is so strong, that the sun is only a reflection of him. And in one Purana is a story that when the sun sets, not on the earth planet, but in the heavenly planets, when the sun sets, he hands his fire over to Agni to keep it. And then when he rises in the morning, he gets it back. <laughs> so the third part of Hrim is E, which is uh, the way the aspirant can focus his energy and actually advance on the path. E is the universal uh, will. And the will of the universe, of course, is to attain self-realization. So if we are also endeavoring for self-realization, that means we're in harmony with the will of the universe. Otherwise, we're fighting against the universe. And of course, who's going to win? <laughs> so then nada, mm, ma sound, refers to the universal mother. And she reflects the light of Shiva to form the creation. Okay? If the light of Shiva is simply going out into empty space, it will be lost because space is so vast. Huh? But if that light is reflected in various ways, then it appears that there's something there, isn't it? So this is how Maya operates. Maya is simply reflecting the light of Shiva in different ways, different colors, forms, shapes, motions, relationships, different, different, all different attributes and qualities. But these forms are simply reflections that appear in the darkness of emptiness. So Maya. <laughs> so she's known as Vimarsha. Vimarsha means a reflection. And finally, the Bindu, the mm, nasal resonant sound at the end, is the uh, dispeller of all sorrow. And so this also means dispelling ignorance, which is the cause of suffering. So we, we had an interesting discussion about this yesterday, that the, uh, some people in South India say that this should be pronounced hrim, uh -huh, and they don't have the nasal termination. But then we found out that because the Sanskrit language is not taught in the schools and universities of South India, gradually the Sanskrit uh, expertise and usage has declined. And now there are many things that uh, the South Indians pronounce differently from the North Indians in Sanskrit. Uh, but we went back to the scripture, the Tripura Rahasya. And in Tripura Rahasya, it is narrated that the author was previously, in his, pre, in his previous life, he was a young boy. And his father was a very pious devotee of Ambal. And because of that, used to refer to his mother as Ai, as an expansion of the goddess, Ai. So the boy also would call her Ai. So then, when he's still very young, he got sick. And for a long time, he was calling, I, 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 with full faith and determination. Because of that, he got blessed by the goddess and she appeared to him and gave him the benediction of being able to pray very nicely and articulate his feelings. 
And so then he offered wonderful prayers to the goddess and like that, just before leaving the body. And as a result, in the next life, he got association with great souls. He became a disciple of Parashuram. Parashuram then taught him the Tripura Rahasya. But from his point of view, he was just a, a, a simple, dumb boy. <laughs> he was illiterate, practically. Huh? And so he, he said, well, how am I going to write this great work? How am I going to record these wonderful teachings if I can't read and write? So then Narada appeared, and Narada even called for Lord Brahma to appear, and they had a meeting. <laughs> And Brahma revealed that, well, in your previous life, you were chanting the name of the goddess, I. But you did not include the nasal termination, I. Huh? And because you did, not, you did not remember the blessings in your next life. And the explanation of this is that the nasal termination of like Aung, Aing, Hring, Kling, every, you know, uh, Mula Mantra uh, or Bija Mantra, the resonance of this frequency drives the energy up into the Agnya Chakra. And then it becomes part of the seed that goes to form the next body. So when the mantras are terminated correctly, their results are stored in the seed, and in the next life one remembers spontaneously all of the realizations due to that chanting. So Hring is also known as Bhuvaneshwari Bija. Bhuvaneshwari is a name of Ambal. Bhuvana means the earth, and Ishwari means the ruler. So Bhuvaneshwari is the ruler of the earth, the queen of, the, of nature. Ha means Shiva, and Ra means Prakriti, which can be explained as nature, mother nature, or the original substance from which all creation is derived, the Mahatattva. So Lalita Sahasranam 397 is called Mula Prakriti. Mula means root, and Prakriti means the energy or the substance. So she is actually the root substance of everything that exists. Uh, and what is that? Consciousness. So she is consciousness. See, these gods and goddesses, you can look at it two ways. From the point of view of Dvaitavada and Vishishta Dvaitavada, they are real entities, persons with extraordinary power. But from the Vivartavada and the Ajatavada, they are metaphors for the forces of nature. So just as Shiva, is a metaphor for unconditioned awareness. Then Ambal, the goddess, the universal mother, is a metaphor for consciousness, which has an object, which introduces duality. I, thou, the subject and the object. So the original duality is between Shiva and Shakti. Okay? And then she reflects his light to manifest the creation. So she's Bhuvaneshwari. E also means Mahamaya, the divine power of illusion. Huh? Because of this, because the nature is simply a reflection of the original awareness, the original light. Uh, nada, the mm sound, means Sri Mata, the universal mother. And the, the bindu, the dot, is the dispeller of sorrows. Therefore, hring can be explained as shiva, ha, and shakti, ra, unite to cause creation, nada, or m, mm, 
making a person afflicted with illusion and therefore suffering. But they can remove this illusion if the aspirant contemplates them, and this removal of illusion, ignorance, and suffering is done through the bindu. Mm, dot. Huh? So this mm, this this nasal termination of the mantras is extremely important in the sadhana and should not be omitted. Yeah? Because by by omitting it, one is actually uh, losing this power to dispel the illusion and end the suffering of existence. Om Tat Sat Buddha Sharanai. <laughs>